Hi, I'm Wink Martindale, and I'm on with Corey Oliver. And on the show, we're going to be talking about my new radio show. So I hope you'll watch. Welcome to the Coriolis Effect with Corey Oliver. Thanks for watching the Coriolis Effect. Please hit the subscribe button below, and we hope you like this episode. Hi, guys. We wanted to announce that like many podcasters, we just started a Patreon account. Visit our page at patreon.com backslash the Coriolis Effect. We have five different levels of membership and offer early access to episodes, behind-the-scenes footage, bonus episodes, shout-outs, and much more, including personal phone calls, questions and answer sessions, and live chats with Bob and me. That's patreon.com backslash the Coriolis effect. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, Corey. How are Testing. you? Testing. One, two, three. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing, doing very well. You're doing, doing very doing, well. Doing, did I say that twice? Yeah, you did. <laughs> I was doing voiceover work and I never realized this, but apparently I say um a lot. All the time. Really? I yes. never, until I listen to myself, I never caught 100%, that. 100% all the time. I say it every word. 100%. Um, yes. Yeah, I do, especially when I'm ad-libbing and stuff. My, uh-uh, I gotta, and um, it's very irritating. I don't know how you put up with yes. the last 80 plus shows. I don't either. Um, so who's on the show today? Um, I'm literally, I know, I get excited about every, all of our guests because I'm so grateful for all of, each and every one of them, but today we have, um, the legendary Wink Mark and, Martindale. Wow, big get. Right. I know. Wink at Martindale. He has been in the business a very, very long time. He, first of all, he and his wife, I know them well, and they do not age. So they just, I would like to drink from the same fountain of youth. Yeah. They are so wonderful. Um, I just remember him in that pink jacket. Or the, yeah. Or a salmon colored jacket. He's yeah, great. He is, yeah. Oh, and they're just lovely people. And you just, I'm telling you right now, and oddly enough, and we'll talk about this um, when he comes on, I met them 20 something years ago when I was doing makeup on the home and family show they came on the show wink came on the show and then cut to 20 some years later uh his their son Eric came on um my Beverly Hills Pond and was in one of the scenes he had some he's a he loves cars and so I ended up doing a scene with him and then we've just stayed in contact and and they're just lovely uh, lovely people what was Wink's game show Oh, which one? Like yeah, he has, them, right? oh yes, he's uh, the whole list. Gambit, he did for, you know, six years, five years. Tic-tac-toe. Tic-tac-toe, that was the one I remember. Oh yes. yeah, High Rollers, Debt, he's got a well, list. High Rollers was good too, but yes. Tic-tac-toe was a great, great show. Oh, he's phenomenal. And he does his stories from Tennessee. And everybody's from Tennessee. I know, it's Tennessee. I'm feeling the love from Tennessee. So um, yeah, we'll just talk to him about his story. And, and he, he's got great stories. He's been, you know, in this business for a very long time and he has sustained longevity in this business and I love that. He's He's got a website, winkmartindale.org, right. that you can visit and it's got all kinds of stuff on there, merchandise and books and audios. He's just an incredible man and their love is so sweet to witness and to be a part of and just to be in the same room with both of them. I've been to many events that both of them have been at and I, I just love talking to them. They're just down to earth, wonderful people, and you know Sandy Martindale. Yeah. You know she, she used to date Elvis. That's right. Before and he, Priscilla, right? Yes, yeah. and he actually, um, you know, was instrumental in getting one of Elvis's songs on the radio. Uh, the one uh, called Sandy. No, what was it called? Um, That's all right. Really. Yes. So he was, he's got a, he's got stories to tell, I tell you. So I'm very excited to have my, can you see me? I'm bursting yes, at the seams. See we don't unfortunately get right to here, have him in the studio. They are, um, in Tennessee. No, I believe they're in Palm Desert. Um, so we will be doing oh, he's a Zoom from Tennessee. call. Yes. Okay. Well, they lived out here in Westlake oh, really? for a very long time. Yes. Oh, I've driven down to Palm Springs to go see him. Yes. No, miles. they're Let's just go. wonderful. I'm excited. Okay. So I can tell. Yes. All right, then we will uh, see you in a few. Thanks, Bob. You're welcome, Corey. Okay. Bye. This episode is sponsored by Brizo Healthy Fruit Tonic. With Manuka honey and apple cider vinegar, less than four grams of sugar, and under 35 calories per can, each of Brizo's four flavors not only taste great, they are an excellent source of vitamin C. Brizo boosts your immune system and is great for your post-workout recovery. Brizo, available on Amazon and at Brizo.com. 
We want to take a minute and talk to you about ExpressVPN. Most people don't know that your internet provider, many websites, and even apps collect all of your data and then sell it to whoever's willing to pay for it. They know what websites you visited, what products you've bought, what products you looked at and did not buy, and some people can even copy your passwords and usernames and then access your private accounts. ExpressVPN encrypts all of your data and sends it from their servers so no one knows where you are. With ExpressVPN, people may think you're in Bangladesh when you're really in Chicago. They would think you're in South America when you're really in Detroit. ExpressVPN protects you from hackers who try to steal your information and also from spies who try to use your data for their own nefarious purposes. ExpressVPN also allows you unrestricted access to all parts of the Internet. How does it work? ExpressVPN uses the best-in-class encryption. Whenever you are connected to ExpressVPN, every piece of data going in and out of your devices goes through a security encrypted tunnel and cannot be seen. Not by the government, not by hackers, not by your internet service provider, not even by ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN also employs IP masking. Every device has a unique IP address, which can be traced back to you. When you use ExpressVPN, your connection gets routed through one of their 3,000 plus servers, hiding your real IP address and replacing it with one of their own. This allows you to browse the web truly anonymously. With servers in 94 different countries, you have a wide variety of places you can choose to appear from. ExpressVPN also provides 24-7 customer support with live chat, which means your question will be answered within seconds, not hours or days. It is also one of the easiest apps to use. Just open the app and with one click, you're protected. It is also physically impossible for any of ExpressVPN servers to store logs of any customers. And ExpressVPN is a top-rated VPN provider, rated number one by CNET, The Verge, Wired, TechRadar, and many more. Just go to expressvpn.com backslash Corey to get three extra months free with a 12-month plan. This is a limited-time offer for the Coriolis Effect with Corey Oliver listeners. Again, get three months free with a 12-month plan. Go to expressvpn.com backslash Corey. With ExpressVPN, you can protect all of your digital devices, your computers, your phones, your tablets, everything and have no more border restrictions. Again, that's expressvpn.com backslash Corey. And let's start the show. Let's start the show. I am very, very excited today to have two very dear friends and just the most wonderful people and couple I know. Huh. Uh, uh, Sandy and Wink Martindale. Are you giving a clap? I am. Too. Yeah, we have sound effects here, guys. <laughs> Yes, I know. I'm very, very excited. I, I'll just go through it really quickly, and then we have a word of the day. But I met these two lovely people um, years ago. It was 20-something years ago on the Home and Family show. I think I actually even was touching up. Uh, may I, I'll call you Mr. Martindale? No, Wink. Wink. Mr. Wink. Wink. Wink's <laughs> makeup. Cut to years later, uh, Eric, their, their friend, slant son, for the lack of a better term, was on Beverly Hills Pond. And we just have met at several different events throughout the years. And I just love both of you so much. And Aww. I can't wait to talk about, you know, your career and you two as a couple and all of the things that you embody and, and are. Sorry, uh, time's up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> well, first of all, you don't age, so we're going to go through that. But um, we have a word of the day that you'll have to guess, and Bob's going to play it for you right now. Bob Victor is my producer. Uh, you didn't, Sandy got to see him, but. Um, all right, so this word is a phobia. I'm going to play it twice. I'll spell it for you and see if you can guess it. Ludusostendephobia. 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 L U D U. S O S T E N D E phobia. Ludo Sostendi phobia. And we're supposed to do what with that? You got to tell me what it means. What is it the fear of? Ludo. <laughs> Sounds like a song. Ludo. Well, I'll give you, it, it, it's made up of Ludo and Sostende are the two root words. Latin? Yeah, those are two Latin words, yeah. I have no idea. I wish I was smarter. We're not going to win the brand new car. I we do not win a brand new car. <laughs> <laughs> Corey? Uh, the fear of game shows. Are you kidding? Oh, my God. Yes. That's exactly what it is. Is it? I was so used to getting it wrong, you getting it wrong, <laughs> that I had no idea you'd ever get one right. 
we always try to tailor them to our guests. And there so is. since you are the king of game show hosts, you have been on uh, 21 game shows, right? Hosted. Um, we That's what he came up with, which well done you. Thank you. Well done. Um, <laughs> I can't believe you got one right. I, I, I know. Detective. That's the only 80, 83, four, five episodes. You finally got one right. Hey, you know what? I'm glad it's you guys. I got it right. I got it right. <laughs> Welcome to the Coriolis Effect, both of you. I'm so happy to have you guys here today. I can't wait to just talk to you and and um, hear about what you are doing. Which, by the way, before the show, our little birdie told me that you went back to work, Mr. Martindale. Wink. Wink. Sorry. <laughs> my, I can't get my mom's head out of my mind. You know, it's like she's a voice in my head. Yeah. You know, uh, when we moved to the desert, uh, will be two years this next June. Um, it was to sort of get away from work because I've been working all my life since I was 17 years old, and that was 20 years ago. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my, my arithmetic has never been, you know, on point. That's okay. But uh, we came down here, and uh, we've enjoyed our life in the desert. I wish I'd have done it 10 or 20 years ago. It's so mm -hmm. great, and we just love it. And uh, just recently, I'm going to let Sandy tell the story of how it happened, but now... I am doing a show three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from one to three. And uh, it's whatever I want to do for, for two hours, three days a week. And even between those days on Tuesday and Thursday, they are going to be um, airing my history of rock and roll, which I also host and is syndicated around the world. And it's uh, the history of rock and roll tells the story. So uh, um, for six days a week, I'm uh, pretty busy here in uh, Palm Desert. And I told Sandy today, I said, I've never had more fun in my life. I love radio. Radio is in my blood. If I had to choose between radio and television, I've always said TV may pay a little more money, but uh, I, I choose radio. Just love it. And you can tell her how it all started, Sandy. Well, it's 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 like you know. Uh, well, it's God, as you know, Corey. It's, it's a God, God thing. Uh, he kind of guides us uh, into wh what we do, where we go, what we say yes to, what we say no to. So, a girlfriend of mine was having a dinner party, and uh, she lives her par her place is called Villa Paradiso, and it's gorgeous. It's wow, sounds it like it used to be Cary, Cary Grant has owned it. Um, Howard Hughes has owned this estate, and it's downtown Palm Springs. You can imagine what it looks like. It's 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 a spectacular. It's like you know, you're it's a she has her own resort. Anyway, her name is Tony Holt Kramer, and Tony Holt and Ruta Lee used to do an interview show, uh, and like when we'd be at the Academy Awards and different places, they were the interviewers. Well, now she doesn't do that anymore. She's retired from that, and and she is more into politics. So. Uh, she invited us to dinner and she had like 15 people there. And of course we all had to be vaccinated or we couldn't go, even though it was outside. And uh, this lady comes up to wink and she said, hi, my name is Joey English. And I do a, a radio, I'm on talk radio here in the desert for like 20 some years. What are you doing now, wink? And wink says, well, I do the history of rock and roll. And I do this Christmas countdown, the 100 hot, top Christmas songs every year. They redo that sort of a Casey does. Kasem countdown favorite Christmas songs from 100 to one. I've done that for 18 right. years. Yeah. So, so I, we just told her, you know what we're doing. She, oh, well, let's exchange numbers. Okay, fine. So we exchange numbers. She calls two weeks later and she said, well, a guy just came from Houston and bought these two radio stations here, two AM, two FM. And, um, He's already bought your history of rock and roll. I mean, she already sold it. She history of rock and roll and the Christmas. That that's that's a given. She said, but he wants to take you guys to dinner. What's your favorite restaurant? So I told her one of our favorite restaurants, and she said, okay. And then she called me back. She said, oh, we can't get a reservation. It was it's a restaurant called Las Vegas. Can't get a reservation. I thought, well, gee, you can't wait till the day of. You have to, you know, this is <laughs> snowbird time, and you have to make reservations in advance. So she said, where else would you like to go? And I said, well, the Indian Wells Resort has this wonderful singer there called Mark Antonelli. And he is, he's like Bocelli. I mean, you get chill bumps mm. listening to this guy sing. Fabulous. He sings this marvelous voice oh. and, he, and he sings with 
pre-recorded tracks and it oh, I he, love he it. sings for three solid hours unbelievable and he's fabulous and this place it's called well at the end of the um to be uh it's a hotel and it used to be owned by lucy and desi and now it's called the indian wells resort hotel and it's um i don't know who owns it now but it used to be called frank's place this room where this guy performs and now it's just called live and so we sang he was singing along with all the bocelli stuff all the beautiful songs this guy was singing so the three of us are just sitting there singing and tony uh the other lady um joey joined us for dinner and we had this fabulous dinner with him and he said wink i want you to go back on the air and we said no no i came down here and retired <laughs> and he said i don't want to go to a radio station he said i'll make it easy for you you can do it from home well now it's starting to sound a little more interesting and he said you know program directors are always telling me you know all my life i had program directors saying you can play this you can't play that what to do this guy said no no you're the pro Whatever you want to do, no no restrictions. Wow. And so then And then he made an offer I could not refuse. And and oh, Wink's that is creative. so wonderful. And so he can <laughs> Wink loves to create. And so Wink can now create this stuff. So I'll finish this by saying, so I said to him uh, in regards to program directors, um, uh, years ago when I was working with Dolly Parton and she was just starting out and she had a record called Butterfly, Wink was on KMPC and I said, Wink you got to play this. And he said, Sandy, that's a country record. I'll get fired. I can't program director. He couldn't play it. Oh, gee. Well, anyway, he was dating me at the time. So he wanted to impress me. So on uh, we get to the airport and he played it. And you should have seen Dolly jumping up and down. I mean, it was hysterical because she hadn't heard her song on, on the air. And so we were so excited. And so we went to, I took her to Las Vegas for her first time ever. We come back. So Go fade to black and then years later she becomes a huge star right so wink said sandy do you think we could get dolly to come to the station i said sure she'll remember you know because you were there at the beginning and you played a record and at that time she was not doing interviews with no, anybody no so i called the scotty brothers who were representing her at the time they were her record label and they said oh no she doesn't give interviews and i said would you please tell her sandy farah martindale Okay. Well, yeah, sure. All right. So then the, they call me back. Oh, she oh. wants to do it. Surprise. <laughs> so the same people that would have fired him at the station were now standing there with their tongues hanging out, watching wow. him in the control room with Dolly Parton. It was hysterical. And the only other time that happened was Pia Zadora. Um, a girlfriend brought me her album and said, listen to this girl. So we enjoyed it and we were invited to go hear her perform. So we go hear her perform. She did a concert and she sang her tail off. I mean, this little girl really yes, sang well. She's with, amazing. Off, with a symphony orchestra. She is amazing. So we stood up and gave, we were the first two to stand up to uh, in appreciation and gave her a big standing ovation. So now we're backstage and her husband, Mishulam Rickla says, you two stood up. I saw that. I will not forget that. Oh, well, that, you know, that's Aww. nice. Okay. So now my girlfriend calls me and she said, can you, can you get the album on the radio? So when he takes it into the program director, puts his hand over the name, and he said, I'm not going to tell you this is, just listen to this girl sing. And, and then he ended up putting a couple of the songs on. So then we get a call and they say, what would you like, Wink? You want a new Mercedes? You want, well, you take it from there. <laughs> and I said, no, I can't do that. You know, I'd get, not only would I get fired, you know, I would get put in jail. You, that's payola. You know, and that was, in right. those days, that, that was a no-no. Today, right. it's still a no-no. So I said, no, but I tell you what I will take. And uh, they said, what? Pia Zadora and Mishulam Rickless bring their orchestra back to Jackson, Tennessee, my hometown, little 40,000 people town, where I did an annual telethon for the local cerebral palsy center. And wouldn't you know, they said, no problem. They came back. Not only uh, did they uh, pay for the orchestra, big orchestra for Pia, because she didn't, she didn't exactly sing with a little combo you know <laughs> yeah. and they only they not only did that but they went to nashville 
and brought an additional 15 or 20 strings to add to the wow. organ. So they were there the entire weekend and they gave us a check too, didn't Wrote they? Wrote a check too. He, he also was giving at that time to the national and Pia says to him, Rick, write him a check. How much are you raising here? How much do you need? What? Do you <laughs> and he said, no, no, Pia, we give to the national, national as well. National cerebral palsy. <laughs> so they get 50,000 there. So he wrote, he, they wrote a, a, they said, okay, everybody that wow. called in the next two hours, will match it. And they matched it. It was like 25, 30,000. You know, one of the things I love about both of you and, you know, you're, this is my motto too. And, and I say this all the time, um, but it's to whom much is given, much is expected. And I don't know if many people out there know uh, that you are, you're very humble. You're so kind. You're so, both of you are so gracious, but you were uh, awarded by uh, Fred Smith, who's of Federal Express, created this award. Is it, is it called the Tigret or Tigret? Tigret. Tigret Award. Yeah. And it's Tigret really, award. it means it's a person um, who greatly contributed to society. Um, and I think that that is an out of all the awards, you know, the Emmys and Oscars and all those things, that is a noble award. And so, thank, well done, thank, good and faithful you. servant. Thank you. The, the other two things that, that have happened to me in my career that I really and truly uh, uh, am proud of is my star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Yes. And the other thing is about five years ago, I was one of the initial inductees into the Tennessee Radio Hall of Fame. And of course, Ooh, I'm from Tennessee, cool. and that's where I got started in radio when I was a kid. So, uh, you know, it's just, I don't know what it means to anybody else, but it means a lot to me. It means a lot to you. And, and you know, I always, we always say on this show, you know, and you, I actually were, are quoted as saying this too, is, is um, if, you, if, you, if you believe something, you know, and Disney, Walt Disney said it, if you believe it, you can achieve it, right? Correct. And I love the story. Uh, I, I've really done my research on you, Wink, because I, I, huh? I just love you both so much. You're very dear to me. Just uh -huh. the fact that I see you at these events and for all these years, and you both are always so kind, and you, you give people, you know, your time, which is, is it might even be like a minute in that moment, but you're still very present when you're with them. Both of you, you are. Know what? I, I, and I, so, I, I feel blessed, and Sandy does too that anybody wants to take the time to talk to us for Pete's sakes. Aww. I really mean See, that. See, that's how like amazing you are. Well, one of these stories stuck out, and it's when you used to listen to uh, Stella at Dallas with your mom, and you would pretended to be Gene Autry. And then cut two years later in 1971, mm. uh, you did a 12-year run on the Gene Autry uh, show. I, what was it called? Station of the Stars? Yeah, radio station that is ABC. The Perfect example of dream it and you will achieve it. Yeah, let me tell you a quick story about Gene Autry and the way that all came about. Um, I, it, it was the station of the stars. They had tremendous personalities on the station. And um, I was doing the noon to three radio program. And uh, my, my creation, my, my thing on the station from noon to three every day was to do audio biographies. And... I would have a Neil Diamond or a Barbara Streisand or a Sinatra, you name it, come in, do a lengthy interview, and then take that interview and uh, edit it down to, you know, the meat of the interview and surround it with music and slide into a song that we're talking about. And it turned out to be my thing. And uh, I got some awards for that. But what I was going to tell you was the day that I sat in the general manager's office. His name was Stanley L. Spiro. God bless him. He's the one who hired me and signed me to a contract for and with Gene Autry at KMPC. And uh, it was it was my dream to work at KMPC. And uh, I'm sitting there and I've just signed the contract. We're in this lush office and in walks the man in the white hat, Gene Autry himself. Mm -hmm. You got to remember when I was a kid, eight, nine, 10 years old, I used to, in Jackson, Tennessee, I used to listen at four o'clock every Sunday afternoon to Melody Ranch with Gene Autry on the radio. I mean, it was yeah. just regular listening, you know. And here, all of a sudden, I have a chance to uh, shake this man's hand. And he, he came over to me and gave me a big hug. 
And you'd have, you'd have thought I was really somebody because he said, it is a pleasure to have you on the station. He had heard mm. me on other stations in town. And uh, Jim Lang, who was doing Noon to Three, who was the host of the newlywed game for a lot of years, no, the dating game, he had gone back to San Francisco, his home, and had left that Noon to Three slot open, and that's when I came in and took over. But uh, the opportunity to, to meet this man and then have the opportunity to sit in his office on many occasions across the desk from him and have him regale me with stories of his career it was like a, you know, like a dream. Oh, okay. And then this just occurred to me. So Gene Autry has been like a this big thing in our life forever because guess where we met? In Palm Springs at, at the, the Gene, Gene Autry, Autry Hotel. Hotel. No way. 15 years ago. I was down there to do wow. a commercial one weekend ago. for General Telephone. It's on a weekend. She was there with her girlfriend, and you can. I was there for the music industry's golf tournament because they had to be equally drunk and consume a shot of whatever they drank at every <laughs> hole. <laughs> and so, uh, my dad had nightclubs in L.A., and they said uh, somebody came in from the music industry and said, "Oh, Sandy, we you want to come drive the booze cart?" Because they had to sign off. You know, I had a little golf cart, and they had to sign off that they consumed whatever it was that they were drinking. Did you drink time. any either? No, no. Uh, but I thought. I'll go and do that, but I'm not going down there with all these guys that are drinking like that by myself. So I took my girlfriend with me. So my girlfriend, her name is Terry Brown, and she, her, her, her dad, uh, Warren Brown, was uh, in the music business, and her uncle is Les Brown, the band of renown, uh, who, you know, Doris Day started singing with. So she came with me. And she knew Wink. I I I had seen him on. Tel- I think I used to come home after school and watch his dance party show, but I didn't know him. And um, he and his buddy, because he had recently gotten a divorce, they were walking by to check out the girls at the pool. And my girlfriend goes, Wink, and he goes, Oh, hi, Terry. Because they had no luck at the pool. And so they come over. They sit down. They bought our coffee. Nice meeting you. Goodbye. I talked to the guy that lived next door to him, this Michael Schmidt, and he talked to Terry. And two weeks later, she called me. She said, you'll never guess who called me for your number. And I said, who? Wink Martindale. I said, really? She said, yeah, he's he's really a nice guy. But he was really shy. He wasn't into the dating thing. So he was very sweet and very shy. And then it took him another two weeks to actually call me for the date. And then it was supposed to be a double date. But this guy, Bill Smith, that was uh, on radio with him, and he got fogged in in Catalina doing a story for Dick Whittington. <laughs> so he brought this guy's girlfriend, Karen Smith. Well, they got married. They were married for 50 some years as well. Anyway, got uh, Karen to come for moral support. So it was the three of us on our first date at the Chart House in Malibu. And this is 50 years ago. <laughs> And You're we're kidding. You had someone there for moral support. That is the yeah. cutest The truth story. is, she got a hold of my telephone number, and I couldn't get her to stop calling me. <laughs> get, some, get some boots and a shovel. I think somebody's out my door. Uh, Hush. Let we, we Go with Winky. I'll, uh, I think a guy okay. wants to re-clean a window he messed up. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, we'll you know, actually, Wink, I have a question for you, Wink, because I... Um, I'm curious. Your your real name is Winston Conrad, right? Yeah, correct. Who gave you the name Wink, and when did they did you acquire when, that name? When I was a kid, uh, a kid across the street. His name was Jimmy McCord. We used to play together as, as as kids, and he had a speech impediment of sorts. And when he tried to say Winston, for some reason, it came out sounding like more like Winky. So I became, instead of Winston, Winky Martindale of the neighborhood. And then when I got into this business, I just shortened it to Wink, and it served me well. I, it I wish is I had the a better greatest story, but stage that's it. name of all times. Yeah, because if you say Wink, you know exactly who you're talking Everybody about. Everybody knows, there's only, there's only yes. One, but you know what? I thought there was only Wink Martindale until I'm watching professional football one night two years ago. And I disc- here, here I was watching this professional football game, Baltimore Ravens and somebody, and I hear the announcer say, uh, Wink Martindale. And the Ravens, it turns out, has a defensive line coach named Wink Martindale. 
Yeah, I thought I was you the only it. one. <laughs> I think he stole your name, Wink. Move I think he away. stole your Move name. Away. He's he's riding on your coattails. Yeah, His name's yeah, Mike that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, I love your name, your actual name, Winston Conrad. But um, Wink is definitely. Such a great name. Um, Winston Conrad, you ought to be in Parliament. Namely. I know, right? Well, actually, Winston, uh, my mother named me Winston for Winston Churchill, as you might imagine. Right. And then the Conrad, there was a, a famous actor in the 30s and 40s whose name was Conrad Nagel. And that was a favorite of hers. So that's where the Conrad came from. Well, you and your wife are have a common bond. And that is Elvis Presley. Yes, that you were instrumental. For sure. Yes, you were instrumental in in his career in in the early days. And I read that you and please correct me if I'm wrong, but you know I I read a lot of stuff and and it this stuck out. You you played his song "That's All Right." This is beeping. Does that mean it's going to lose battery? Do you yep. have another one? Okay. Um, sorry, I'm just going to change. Sorry, wink. Uh. You played his song, That's All Right, and you wanted to interview him, but he was very, 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 very nervous, right? Okay, let me, let me, uh, you're partly correct. Okay, I here, want you to tell a story because it's really fascinating. Here, here's what happened. This is a true story. I'm the only person of six still living who was there that night. It was a hot, muggy July night in Memphis, Tennessee in, uh, 1954. And I was at WHBQ radio. I was the morning man, but I happened to be there that night uh, showing some of my friends that I'd played high school football with from Jackson, Tennessee. I was showing them around the station. And all of a sudden I hear this commotion out of Dewey Phillips studio. Dewey was a wild man, a uh, wild DJ, one of a kind guy who um, did a show called Red Hot and Blue every night from nine to midnight. And as it happens, Sam Phillips, who founded Sun Records, walked in with an acetate that he had, he had just recorded, this truck driver, two years earlier uh, that afternoon. And uh, the song was called That's All Right Mama. And he had an acetate, hadn't been pressed yet, gave it to Dewey. He played it, switchboard lit up, played it seven times in a row. And I was the one designated to call Mr. and Mrs. Presley to find out where Elvis was, because naturally... We all wanted him to come down to the radio station. Well, Mrs. Presley and Mr. Presley were listening to the radio, and they were hearing the excitement being generated by their son's record. And she said, well, Wink, he, he was so nervous about his record being played, he went to see a double feature Western at Suzor's number two. So they got in their truck, and they went down, walked up down the dark aisle, found Elvis sitting all by himself watching a Western, whispered to him about the commotion being caused by that's all right mama and brought him down to the radio station i met him that night he remained my friend until the day he died but mm. uh that was uh that was uh, one of those situations where you you were talking about him being interviewed he had no idea when he walked into the control room and sat down in front of the microphone to talk to dewey phillips the dj he had no idea the microphone was on and after the interview was over uh, Elvis said, uh, Mr. Phillips, I thought you were going to interview me. He said, son, I just did. <laughs> they had no idea. Had he known, but he probably was, would have been a lot ner more nervous, huh? That, that was quite a night. And uh, of the six people, as I mentioned, that were there that night, which was the beginning of Presley Mania. Yes. Music changed forever that Ever. night in 1954. And in 1955, when Blackboard Jungle came out, and Rock Around the Clock, Bill Haley and the Comets. And then of the six people who were there that night, I'm the only one living who's, uh, who's here oh. to tell the, the story. But that was the beginning of Presley Mania. And then you had the Everly Brothers and all, all hell broke loose during the uh, bottom half of that decade. And, and music was never the same. And speaking of the bottom half, I know this sounds silly, but I had read somewhere, and you probably know more about this than I do, but I, it, you know, Elvis Presley, he he moved when he danced and he sang and he'd gyrate his hips and the news stations or the TV stations would say film him from the waist up because that was considered to be too much, you know, movement, right? Yeah, Back that had its that that had its beginning, that that from the waist up thing on the Ed Sullivan show when when Elvis right. appeared on 
the Sullivan show several times. And uh, they didn't, uh, they were the ones, Ed Sullivan and his producers were the ones who filmed him from the, the waist up. But that's right. where that you, started. Yes. Can you imagine nowadays? <laughs> we don't, we don't censor <laughs> or edit anything. Yes. My goodness. That'd be fabulous. That's like fabulous today. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and you were, you too were on the Ed Sullivan show. Yeah, I when I first came out here in 1950, came out here. Uh, when I came from Memphis to Los Angeles in 1959, uh, I had a record contract with Dot Records, and uh, I had never made a record before. But uh, Randy Wood, who founded Dot Records, uh, had uh, met me in Memphis, and he had a couple of ideas uh, for me uh, on record, and so I signed a contract with him. And when I got out here, uh, just I guess it was in uh, May of 59. We went into a studio. Well, first of all, when I got off the air one morning at KHJ, which is why I, I was transferred out here by RKO from Memphis to Los Angeles. And I did the morning show. And <clears throat> just like I had done in Memphis, when I got off the air one day, I got a phone call and it was from Randy Wood who wanted me to come up the street on Vine Street to uh, his offices, Dot Records offices. He had a record he wanted to play for me uh, to see if I liked it. And so I couldn't wait to get off the air. And I walked up the street about three blocks and I went up to his plush offices and uh, Randy Wood put this 78 RPM record on the turntable uh, for me to uh, for me to listen to. And it was an old beat up, scratchy country record by T. Texas Tyler, a country singer. And it was a narration, wasn't a song, it was a narration, a narrative called Deck of Cards, which had been popular right after World War II. And uh, I'm listening to it, and it's rather engaging, but I thought the number one record is Mac the Knife by Bobby Darin. We got Frankie <laughs> Avalon's Venus. Who's going to buy a semi-religious talking record? Well, I was determined to say I liked it, you know, when... He took the needle off of it. And sure enough, the record ended, took the needle off. He says, well, wait, Wink, what do you think? I said, Randy, I love it. I love it. So we went into a studio just a few weeks later, made the record. It came out in September. And by November, uh, it was on the charts. And uh, some DJ in Boston, Bob Clayton in Boston, had uh played it on a lark one morning on his morning show and the switchboard lit up and they ordered 10,000 copies of my record that day wow. in Boston. And then it just swept the country. And uh, then I got a call to come back to New York to do it on the Ed Sullivan show, which was, uh, you know, a real out of body experience because I grew up watching the Ed Sullivan show toast of the town. And here, all of a sudden, I'm standing on the same stage uh, performing this narration. And uh, it, it went over big that, that night. And the next morning, since I was in New York, uh, my promotion man said, why don't we go around to the radio stations and you can meet the DJs? And I remember the first station we went to, I walked into the record library. And who was standing in there but Tony Bennett? And Tony Bennett came uh -huh. over to me and said, Wink, I saw you last night on Sullivan. You were great. And I thought, what's wrong with this picture? Tony <laughs> Bennett is telling me. I'm <laughs> but it was uh, it was quite an experience because when as a 17 year old DJ in Jackson, Tennessee, I, 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 I was I grew up playing Tony Bennett's records because of you and uh, Boulevard of Broken Dreams and those kinds of things. So. That's but you said, you say a shiny example of what happens when one envisions a goal and acts upon it. That's, you seems like, it seems like you've done that with your life. You envision things and, and they happen and you act upon them and, it, and it's happened. And, you know, it's very difficult for those listening, for anyone in, in the entertainment industry to sustain this kind of longevity. And it's a blessing, like you've said. And you feel... have seemed to appreciate it every single part of the journey and absolutely it shows. I, I mean i i as an eight nine year old kid uh i knew what i wanted to do with my life i wanted to be on the radio free of television there was no television when i was a kid so uh I, I always wanted to be 
on the radio. I remember uh, I was so devoted to radio. I listened constantly to both drama and music shows and and uh, soap operas with my mom. Two or three, uh, four of those every afternoon. I'd rush home from school and and you know it paints a picture in your mind. Mm-hmm. And I remember uh, on Wednesday nights I listened to Mr. District Attorney. Uh, I listened every every Wednesday night at eight o'clock, so much so that there are days when I can't remember my name, but listen to this. I still remember the introduction to Mr. District Attorney. Oh, well, Mr. Was District Attorney, champion of the people, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And then he would say, and it shall be my duty as District Attorney, not only to prosecute to the limits of the law, all per- persons accused of crimes, perpetrated within this county, but to deliver with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. Now, like I say, that was actually <laughs> there really are good. days when I don't know my name, but I still, that, that just gives you an idea about how devoted I was, not yes. only to Mr. DA, but to radio in general. Sandy, you going to join us? Well, yeah, we're, I'm back, but I don't want to do the bar because they're not oh, done. Oh, my goodness. Who do this we have dude. here? This is Dude. This is Mr. Dude. Mr. Dude. For those of you who are just listening, you, it's we have a chihuahua. We yes. rescued him. Yeah, they said miniature chihuahua, but he's the biggest chihuahua we've ever had. He sounded a lot bigger. I'm not going to lie. His bark <laughs> sound. I thought you had like a mid-sized dog there, like he a lab or dog. something. He, he he loves to communicate with everybody. The truth is, he's our guard dog. Oh he yeah, loves- he seems <laughs> like it. But look at him looking at you, Wink. He's he very loves- fond of oh, his daddy. All oh, those daddy. Yeah, we're, oh, we're good sweet. buddies. We are really good buddies. What's I love great about that. The well, is there's restaurants where we can take him to eat with us. Too. Yes, don't you love that? I think we yeah, should. I have weekend, a dog too. This weekend we're going to Los Angeles uh, to a big party. They're going to come pick us up, take us, and bring us back. And uh, dude's going too. We're going to stay at these the, guys, uh, I, I, this... we're, we're going to stay at the Peninsula Hotel, and uh, he's going to stay there too. He's going with you. Yeah. Well, I have a question, Wink. I'm and and again, I want to talk to you about how you guys you know, about just a lot. But um, if you had to go back, if somebody said to you today, hey, uh, you've done 21 game shows, we're going to, we would like you to pick out of a hat or actually just pick uh, one of those shows, which one would you go back and want to host today? Oh, Tic-Tac-Doe. Tic-Tac-Doe. My my favorite, yeah. Yeah, it was my, it was my favorite because it lasted almost 12 years and I got used to those checks coming in, you know, that's kind of nice. Yeah, it is And it helped buy our house. And uh, but but not only not only that uh, from a monetary standpoint, but uh, excuse me a second. Sorry about this. No, you're fine. This is a podcast. This is we're just this we're having a conversation. Yeah, uh, but but uh, I like it because I like the show. Uh, I've always had uh, you know I, I always thought about the word kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. When, yes. When uh, when accepting a job to host a game show. And I either produced or hosted, as you mentioned, 21 different shows. And as mm-hmm. I laughingly say, and it's probably true, I never could hold a job. Yeah. And so <laughs> I, I tic-tac-toe, everybody knew how to play it. You know, three X's, three O's, vertically, horizontally, diagonally. That was it. And, uh, you know, simple question, answer game. And it was simple to play. And I think that's one of the reasons that it uh, lasted so long. And so of all the shows that I did, and I did, the most recent one I did was called Debt for Disney, where we paid off young people's credit cards up to $10,000. I love that. And I love Gambit, which was my first successful network show on CBS lasted five years. It was a blackjack game. And are you back? We're back, and we're, and we're done See, because you're going to stay this the time? windows are clean. <laughs> oh, good. So, uh, yeah, that's the answer to your question. Well, now that that's – listen, I grew up watching you, and I – Hold on, hold on. Can you name all 21 shows you hosted? No way. <laughs> Don't even go there. But this, this gentleman that bought the radio stations, we had dinner with him the other night, and Wink was mentioning some of the shows, and when he heard Bumper Stumpers – How's your mother-in-law? 
He started, la- I didn't think he was ever going to stop laughing. <laughs> no. How's your mother in law? <laughs> That was a game show that I've, Chuck Barris I have a book called Winking in Life, and on the cover of the book, on the back of the book, are all of the game shows that I've hosted. I wish I'd known you were going to ask me. Oh, no way. Yeah, I had written them all down. No, 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 no. I it's just, not important. I just gave I was just, the I was, window cleaning guy a copy of your book. <laughs> I was I was going to, uh, uh, had I known he was going to ask me, I would have immediately said, one, two, three, four, and name them all, yeah. and he wouldn't know. I was reading them off a book cover. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gave them over, I had it right we'll there. scroll them on the screen as you talk. Which, there by the way, go. if you're listening, you can get a copy of that book on your site, which is uh, winkmartindale.org. Your site has is filled with great merchandise. And by the way, I just yeah. realized and found out, and we talked to Sandy about this, we have a soda pop after yeah. you at Rocket yeah. Fizz. Yeah. Did you get to pick the flavor of that soda pop? Yes, or I did. How did that yes, transpire? Did. And it's a, it's sort of a Hawaiian. Uh, well, because we love Hawaii. We so love Hawaii. So we wanted we wanted it to be tropical, and so they they create the things, they create the flavor. Uh, we just we got to do a, a taste test. Uh, it's sweet. But it's 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 good, and we've actually and, and seen them fun. around the country, and we get a little. Uh, we were in Branson, Missouri, and I saw it in the <laughs> store, and I went, "Oh my gosh, wait, does, you're everywhere!" It, it doesn't make us a fortune, but uh, we get a little check uh, uh, residuals in, and uh, you know, it's like found money. And it's yeah. great. It's, it's, it's kind of nice it's to a, have your name on a pop bottle. Yeah. Are you kidding? Of course it is. <laughs> That's so great. I love that. I mean, it goes with the whole Hollywood star, you know. You're an icon. You're you're yeah. you're just a, you're amazing. I would like to know. I'm jumping all over the place because I have so much in my head. I I've just you two inspire me uh, on many levels, and oh. one is the genuine respect and love that you have carried for 41 years for each other. I, I'm not sure if that's 46. the correct number. 46, 46, Mary. 46 you only years. <laughs> 46 no. years. Yeah. Those are, hey, five. I haven't even lasted five with either one of my husbands. So Once. that's <laughs> weeks. <laughs> no, <laughs> but I very much believe in love and I'm a romantic diehard at heart. And I believe in marriage. I believe in the institution of marriage. I believe in being with one person and that soulmate. And I think that you guys have just had, you know, an incredible love towards one another and you really show it. And what would you say to this generation, which, by the way, is, you know, iPhone, iPad, iBook, I, 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 me, 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 and, and, and there's a new iPhone that comes out every eight months, you know, and, and they've, that's sort of translated into relationships, you know, to some degree. And that's not, I don't believe, I'm just speaking from my own heart. I don't think that's what God intended. And yeah. so what, advice would you give this generation with regards to relationships and and love and marriage i'm gonna let you answer that okay uh, so i've been doing all the talking here if you watch television and go to movies don't think that's real life i think i think soap operas have glamorized cheating divorce and it's not grass is not greener on the other side now, unless you're in a terribly abusive situation where, you, you know, it's dangerous and you have to get out, then whatever else comes along, you can work out. I mean, any little differences. But what we lucked out in is that we have pretty much the same taste in everything. Um, we like to do the same thing. And we do everything together. And so there's not much that we can argue about, really. When we were first married, what the only thing that he would get upset with me because of his radio training He was always on time or early, and I was always late. I was late for everything. In fact, Elvis had to wait like sometimes an hour for a date with me because I was getting ready, you know, so it would take me however long it would take me. And then one time, aside from Wink's influence of getting me up earlier and getting ready earlier and preparing more, um, a friend of ours by the name of Peter Burwash, who is a tennis pro, said, if you're late, you're being selfish about, and you're taking somebody else's time. That was so ugly. I don't want to do that. Did you hear that, Corey? So that, Did you hear that? that I'm really always on time. I, it's a real big pet peeve for me because I agree with that statement. I think it's very important to 
to be on time. And in our business, we can show up at an audition and sit for two hours and wait for them to call on us, huh? Yeah. Well, that's hurry yeah. up and wait. That's the hurry up and wait business. Right. And yeah, people think that's glamorous, but you have to work really hard to achieve anything in that industry. Yeah. But you know, for I'm going to sure. go back to that one mm. statement that you said that the grass is not greener on the other side. And I always add to that and I say the grass is really only green where you water it. Exactly. And that's so a beautiful if both way to people, put it. Yeah, are putting, are watering their we side of the our, grass. You're going to have a beautiful lawn. And exactly. We put our good energy analogy into this into our relationship not other people because they're i mean they're important but not as important as as we yes. are to each other and for the first 25 years i did all the cooking all the cleaning and now things have switched although now that he's starting to work again i don't know but he, he gets up <laughs> in the morning he makes the coffee he does the dishes it's like pinch me i'm dying i even put heaven. your coffee cup out he does and my vitamins oh, and i my died and gone to palm springs that's so beautiful. I mean, so it's like we have we've each, you know, we share everything and we do absolutely everything together. And we're with each other and, 24 hours a day and we're because not, in this house, you know, we're just the two in, of us in this one. We're not in mm -hmm. competition with each other. We support each mm -hmm. other. And that's important. He lets me be me because as he says, I can talk to the wall. He lets me talk and go off on <laughs> tangents. That's fine. I mean, we support each other. You know, we my grandpa... Did. And my grandmother were married for 54 years and they had a beautiful, much like yourself, a beautiful love and a, and a respect for one another. And my grandpa used to tell me, never let the sun go down in any relationship with there being any, you know, animosity or anger yeah. or just always, you know, when you go to bed at night, know, make sure that that relationship is solid. And if you want to talk about something the next day, you can bring it back up. But at least go to bed with peace in your hearts towards one another. Yeah, I believe. And I always thought that was grace. Yeah, yeah, in the beginning of our marriage, maybe we had little little spats and things. But he would get oh, I mean, he'd get upset, but he gets over things. By the time I'd build up to the point to be upset, he's hell way over it. And you know, <laughs> like there could be a little a, a little thing, and then I'd be getting out of a car. He still walks around, opens the car door for me. So you know. There's no, there's no problem. I mean, everything is just so easy. And now we could never get a divorce because together we can come up with two people or a first and a last name. One of us will come up with one. The other one comes up with the other. That happened yesterday. <laughs> yesterday That's so yeah. funny. That's yesterday, cute. Uh, it was um, Faith Hill and I came up with the first one. And the, oh, Tim, Tim McGraw, McGraw and Faith Hill. No, she came up with Tim McGraw and, I, and immediately I said, Faith Hill. So see, they're we can't married. get a divorce yeah. because <laughs> we put everything together. together. Oh, I Plus love that. Plus, he pays the bills. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know where to start. Paying I was going to say, my my father stayed with my mother longer because he didn't know where all the money was. <laughs> no, we know we we have, all of our money is joint money. I mean, we don't have. I think if you start out doing all this separate stuff, then you're going to end up separate. No, it was not separate. It was always joint. He just didn't know when what banks it was because he didn't bother. He went out and did whatever he wanted. My mom took care of the finances. But you well, know, I took care point. of the finances, but he he, he I, he's in the car with me. Sometimes he's in the car with dude, but he'll go to the bank with me. He knows where everything you, is. Of all the long, <laughs> long-term marriages I know about, my parents are still married. They're, they're 75 years or whatever it is. It, the oh, female well. usually takes care of the finances, and that keeps yeah. the marriage strong. I think it scares yeah. the male more than anything else. <laughs> I, I love what you say, uh, Wink. You said, when fortitude is evident, fame and fortune are sure to follow. Tell me what you kind of, where you, that came from for you. Oh, gosh. Did I say that? I think, uh, did I say that? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was very smart of me. Yeah. I, I, I think that, uh, that if whatever whatever you want to do with your life you can do it as long as you believe mm -hmm. fully that you can accomplish that goal and uh i, I think a lot of people set out i, I was so lucky because like i said earlier i knew what i wanted to do in my life so many mm -hmm. people get up in the morning, they go to work and they hate what they're doing and they come home at night and they've had a miserable day. 
set out, uh, first of all, try to figure out as early as possible in your life, whatever your age, uh, what you want to do. What are, you, what are your interests? What is your, your greatest interest? And then go for it. And uh, I think that's probably what I meant when I said what I did. Uh, just go for it and uh, you can accomplish it. And you guys are like the perfect example. I always tell people and my child and, you know, never burn a bridge because you, throughout your lives and your careers, you, you, you both collectively and individually know a lot of people of all walks of life. And you've maintained such a beautiful relationship with all of them. And, and it's life comes back around. We get who we get in our lifetime. And it's, it seems vast and big, but, you know, as I get older, I'm realizing like the people that were sent my way and the people were, that were there for a reason and a season and a lifetime, right? Right. So it's so great to remind this generation that we are to be united and stand with and for one another and love one another. Because right yeah. now, everything going on, and we don't have to get political, but with everything yeah. going on, I feel like the world is divided. And I want people to come together in unity and stand up for, for you know, Because we all really want the same thing. Yes, We all want yes. to have, be healthy, have love. And, yes. ha- and be safe in our country. I mean, what more can, you know, you, you want to achieve in life. But in regards to what you just said, uh, going up and coming down. Okay, so Glenn Campbell, when he first started in the business, when he first came out here, he was a friend of my family. And I even babysat for his oldest girl when they couldn't afford a babysitter. They lived in a little apartment in Hollywood. And he was going on auditions and doing things. And they were like, his family was a part of my family. So years later, when he became a big star and we went to see him at the International Hotel in Las Vegas, well, we're walking into the after party and there's big stars coming up. So, you know, we're kind of like going back thinking, well, he's going to say hello to them first. No, he said hello to his old friends first. You see and I what went, I'm oh saying? my gosh. Yeah. Yes. So that, that relates to what you were saying. Yeah, it's very touching and very important, you know, because we all. And it's, imp- it's important to be there. It's like there was a period where his career slumped and it was mm-hmm. on the down. And we went to see him then and we were talking about it. And it, it's, I said, well, we have to be there for him because this is the time he needs us. He doesn't, That's right. he doesn't need us when everything's great and everybody loves you. You don't need your friends. You need your friends when things you need support. And that's when it's more important to go and see people and do things with them, I think. That's right. You're absolutely right. And speaking of friends, we have a mutual friend, uh, uh, Bear, Dr. Ted Bear. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. A movie guide. I think I've seen you at two of their events. Uh, yes, in- yes. Over by Universal. Yeah, we used uh, to try to go every year. Yeah. When Wink first started, uh, when when Ted first started doing those events, uh, Wink was the MC of one of them. I was the first the whole MC. MC. I was the he first MC, MC the of the thing. first one. Oh my god! Yeah, and they've been doing it for like twenty-seven years or something like that. Well, it's yeah. been it a long time. That many years ago. Yeah, I don't yeah. know how that could be because I'm only twenty-one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I know. laughs> In my dreams. <laughs> you guys are so cute. Well, you guys used to live in Calabasas. You were right around the corner from me. I, I you know, I live around there. Um, yeah. And now you you have are retired, as you say. But as, as I'm going to quote you again, Wink, you said uh, when asked about your retirement, why retire? I'm not tired. Yeah, that's right. That's and you I know think. what? Your words are continuing on because you are now working three days a week on during yeah. your retirement. Yeah, I still have, you know. At my age, uh, I I don't feel my age, and I don't think I look my age, and I know that that I have a great deal of uh, get up and go instead of got up and went. I have a lot of get up and go. I have a lot of energy every morning. I get up, you know, and I can't wait to get into my studio upstairs to start knocking out radio shows. And I've never enjoyed uh, I've never enjoyed my life any more than right now. I don't know how many years. Uh, God's going to give me to stay on the planet. I'm 88 years old. Wow. And so I can't have that many years uh, left. But uh, but I know that uh, the years that I have, I'm going to enjoy every minute. And well, oh. he, uh, 
He he's the answer to my prayer because when I was a little girl and I'd go to church, what I prayed for is somebody that I could grow old with. And God answered my prayer because here we are, we got old together. <laughs> and you don't look it. I mean, you guys, I like I said, you guys forget the soda pop and the books and the radio show. Just create some one universal product and we'll all buy it. I'll be first <laughs> person to buy that product. <laughs> Sandy well, and Wink's uh, youth potion is could be. <laughs> They can, they can go. Love potion. They Youth potion number nine. nine. If, if yeah. anybody yeah. wants to hear his radio show, they can go to kwxy.com and it's streamed free on his Monday, Wednesday, and Friday show that he's doing. kwxy.com. And it's a kwxy.com. Yeah. And there it's, it's one to three, uh, you know, Pacific time, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then when okay. they uh, really get serious next week, uh, beginning the 27th, they are going to also on Tuesdays and Thursdays play my uh, air, my history of rock and roll. So I'll be Ooh. on the air every day. Every but single day. Monday, That's Wednesday fantastic. And Friday are the shows that I count on. We will certainly tune in. We have a few last questions for both of you. And I just okay, can't, I, I just want to say this. Okay. I have to make a yeah. phone call in a minute. Yeah, we got to okay. do a... Uh, one of his machines is having a problem, so it's the engineers going to help us figure okay. out. Okay, okay, we'll make this quick then. We're gonna do uh, a for both of you, let's. Uh, we usually do three words that describe um, yourself, but I'm going to ask three words for you to describe Wink, and Wink three words for you to describe Sandy. Okay, go. <laughs> go. Uh, perfect. Uh, on time. Thoughtful. And as far as Sandy's concerned, deliciously gorgeous. Huh. Uh, friendly with everyone and loving. Everybody loves my wife. I've never met anybody. Everybody. Who, I mean, yeah. absolutely a hundred thousand percent. I'm with you on that one. <laughs> Really, and she can talk. She talks incessantly, and she can literally talk to the wall. No, and I love her for it. I love her for it. Okay, so wrapping up, I want to say um, a few things, but I'm going to do a word association test, Hi. and we're just going to ask you a few words, and you're going to give me quickly the word that is first word. the first word that comes to your mind. Go ahead. So, hard work. I'm sorry. Uh, it's a word association test. Just say the first word that comes to your mind. First word that comes to your mind. Hard, Hard work. work. Wink. <laughs> um, don't know the meaning of the word. <laughs> uh, music. Rock and roll. Tennessee. Life. Music of what? life. What? Tennessee. My home, Jackson. Uh, television. Tic Tac Toe. Ah, radio. Or no, K K W X Y. That's right. That's right. Yeah, K yeah. W X Y. Uh, retirement. No such thing. And game show. Tic-tac-toe. You guys are amazing. I want to say, I'm not even going to ask you who your celebrity crush is because they're, you guys are each other's celebrity crush. Um, but I wanted to say this. I want to leave you with this, that you truly both. <laughs> Here come the tears. I know. I'm so sorry, but you really are <laughs> two of the greatest people that I know. And I'm so grateful for you on this planet and your love and light shine through all that you do and your relationships that you have. And I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking the time today. You are um, both so dear to me and I love you. Well, thank thank you. you. Thank you Corey, so much. We wish you all the very best in whatever endeavor you undertake, darling, whatever you do. Absolutely. We love you too. Thank you. And Merry Christmas. Merry thank Christmas. you. Merry Merry Christmas to you. I'll be tuning into your show. And we're okay. out. The Corey Ollis Effect is produced by Jazz Productions. Producers Corey Oliver and Bob Victor, host Corey Oliver, editor Bob Victor, and assistant editor Kate Bonsall. Hi guys, I'm Corey Oliver, and thank you for watching The Corey Ollis Effect. 
We hope you enjoyed the previous episode. Here are some more episodes you might enjoy. Hit the subscribe button below and have a great day.